Hello everyone. Welcome back to Paper Made Me Do It. Inky hands can only mean one thing. I've got some new inks to swatch for you. I just received an order in the mail recently that I placed online from Venice Pens in Arkansas. So we are going to be swatching out these inks today. I purchased a full bottle of Diatramentus Charles Dickens and then five different Robert Oster four mil samples. So each of the samples cost $2.50. The full bottle of Diatramentus was $14. So very reasonable prices for six new inks to try. And I love that they not only write a little handwritten thank you, but tell you what ink it's written in. So this is KWZ Orange, which is gonna go on my list of inks to sample down the road because I love the way that looks. But I normally don't go into this kind of detail, but I did scan through my email and I do wanna make mention of this because it just floored me with this um, particular order, how efficient um, this company was. This is my second time to place an order with Venice Pens. And I placed this order on Monday, July 13th at 9.19 a.m. Received an email to confirm my order and confirm my payment. And then on the same day at 9.37 a.m., I received another email with a shipping confirmation and my tracking number. So within 18 minutes of placing my order, it was processed and headed out to ship. And then I received it two days later on Wednesday, July 15th. So <clears throat> very impressed with uh, the efficiency of this order. If you've never shopped with Venice pens before, if you'd like to check them out, I will leave their website linked in the description below. So let's get into these swatches. The first is going to be that full bottle that I purchased of Diatramentus Charles Dickens. This is what the bottle looks like. And this purchase was influenced by Alicia at Adventure Denali here on YouTube. I've seen her use this ink in writing samples before and it's been kind of on my mind for quite some time. So I finally decided to track it down and I was happy to find it still in stock at Van S. Pens. So I'm getting ahead of myself here. I'm gonna do an ink swab first in each of these squares with a little cotton swab. And then I have already inked different pens with each of these. And so I'll do the actual writing sample with some different fountain pens so you can see how the inks look in different nibs as well. So let's get on with the swab first. Another name that this is known as, the Charles Dickens, is Cement Gray. So if you see Diatramentus Cement Gray anywhere, from what I understand, that may very well be the identical ink color. I'm gonna go one, two, three swabs and this is on Rhodia, an eight by eight dot grid paper pad. And so I decided to put this in a Twisby mini vac and it has a stub nib. Twisby. I think it might be called a Vac Mini. It's been quite some time since I made this purchase, but it's almost identical in size to their Diamond Mini. And this is a stub nib. Writes very, very smoothly. I just love the way that color looks. It almost, 
it's um it reminds me of like a chameleon like depending on how you look at it it looks greenish or closer to black or then you get vibes of gray it's actually referred to as cement gray as i mentioned but it does have some undertones of green um it's just a really nice dark color if you're looking for something outside of traditional black so super happy with it i'll do a quick writing sample and i'm just going to do everyday cursive So that's the full bottle and then the next five are all sample size four milliliters and Van Ness has a huge ink selection and sample selection. The first one is going to be Robert Oster Khaki. So we'll do the ink swab first. three layers one two three so this ink in some ways reminds me of the Charles Dickens in that it can read different colors depending on I guess lighting or maybe even paper type, nib type. Um, it almost looks gold in a sense, like you could put it in the brown family, but then to me, it does have a little hint of green and even a hint of um, yellow. So I decided to put it in a full size Pilot Vanishing Point. Robert Oster Khaki. And most of his inks, or at least the ones that I own, are very good shaders. And this is in a Pilot Vanishing Point. So this is a gold nib, and it is a medium. And you can see some of that shading coming through. I'll insert some photos at the end of this video of some close-ups. Okay, so I'm really liking that. I tend to Enjoy inks in that family, browns, golds, yellows. So the next is Robert Oster Claret. This one can read mauve, purplish, pink, grapey. This one, the tone of it makes me think of Orochizuku Yamabudo, but I'd be willing to bet that it's not nearly as bright if you were to compare them directly. That may be a good video to do in the future. Take some of these inks that have uh, similar inks, either in the same brand or different brands and just compare similar tones, if that's something y'all would be interested in. Let me know in the comments and I could try to work on that. But this is Robert Oster Claret. And I inked it in another Pilot Vanishing Point, but this is a Decimo. So it's slightly smaller in size, and this is a stub 
نیب I really like it and what I'm noticing right now is that these three look beautiful together. I love that color palette. <laughs> I'm gonna have to reference this and use these together somehow, maybe in some journaling. Okay, so this next sample is Robert Oster Green Black and it has another name as well, like the Charles Dickens is um, also referred to as Cement Gray. The Robert Oster Green Black is also referred to as Groon Swartz. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but a friend of mine um, used this ink and sent me a PM and showed me some of her writing samples. I had never heard of it before, and I thought it was beautiful in her writing samples, so it's been on my list to try for a while, too. I've got a long list of Robert Oster inks that I would like to sample and try because his line is just so extensive. But there's another one in his line called Motor Oil. And I need to remember to put that on my list to try next. I'm curious where it would fall on this spectrum because it was another that's kind of a I think a darker ink if you're looking for something other than traditional black. So I put it in one of my vintage fountain pens. This is an Eversharp Luxury Symphony 707. So I'm not going to press too hard here at the beginning. Just write out Robert Oster. I'm gonna call it by its formal name, which was Green say Shorts. And then I'll go ahead and put green black here. And this I'll give a little pressure on the downstrokes here to get a little flex out of it. So this is an ever sharp. And I purchased this fountain pen. I believe it was old new stock from Peyton Street Pens Symphony. This is a flex nib. So since it is a flex, I'll do this writing sample in a little more scripted style. really liking this a lot. <laughs> to me, it's almost like a slightly deeper version of the Charles Dickens, but it's a beautiful color. 
Okay, so we've got two more samples. Melon Tea, Robert Oster. This has been on my list for a while as well. I have a, another friend who owns a full bottle of this and she's told me more than once, you've got to get this ink. So she really likes it. decided to put it in a Lamy 2000. So this was, gosh, uh, I own two of these. This was my first Lamy 2000 purchase and I was so impressed with it and loved how it wrote so well that I ordered a second in a different size nib and I just cleaned and re-inked this earlier today. I haven't used it in quite some time because it's been out of ink and I've been using the second one that I bought, which is an extra fine nib. But this is the medium nib. And oh my goodness, I forgot. It's been a while since I've written with it, holy cow. <laughs> just writes like butter I like them both and the extra fine um, it's a very nice writer as well but there's nothing like this it's quite possibly um, the smoothest nib I own or at least in the top three I would say Is more of a traditional brown but it's not orangey it's not a reddish brown it's more of a I would say like a true flat brown but yet because of these shading properties it's not boring so so far I don't think we're striking out on anything okay and then the very last one is Robert Oster African Gold and I'm a sucker for golds and yellows, so I'll pretty much tell you without looking at this, I'm probably gonna like it, and I do. <laughs> this is my wheelhouse right here. I put it in my Y Studio Brassing fountain pen, one of my hands down favorite fountain pens. Robert Oster African Gold. And a Y Studio Brassing. This is a fine nib. And it's one of my favorite pens and nibs, but it's actually a stainless nib, as far as I'm aware. I don't believe it's a gold nib, but it writes just as well as um, my other gold nib pens, so. Just has that tiny little bit of, it's not flex, but it has that tiny little bit of cushion to it or bounce, like you would expect from uh, the vanishing points. Okay, so that's it for the swabs and writing samples. I'll include some close-ups here at the end of the video. And it looks like I'm gonna need to start a GoFundMe for my um, ink obsession here. So I'll leave a link to that as well. Ha ha, kidding. <laughs> uh, although, I, I mean, I can't say I wouldn't love to own a full bottle of any of these. Uh, I don't know, I'm gonna have to do some thinking and decide. I, I think this is gonna have to be one of the first ones that I get a full bottle in. But, man, I mean, they're all just beautiful. 
If y'all have tried any of these, um, let me know your experience in the comments below. And thanks so much for watching. I will see y'all again soon. Bye, y'all.